up with Wayne every Tuesday at 11 a.m. That is correct, baby. Wake up with Wayne starting today. Oh, big news. Wake up with Wayne starting today. You can listen in on a podcast on the In The Mix or the DIY or Die Vaping podcast. If you subscribe, you listen to Noted, you listen to Developed, you listen to Mix and Vixens, you will now get the Wake Up With Wayne audio only podcast. That's correct. This is a podcast now. I gotta do some mixing, which doesn't make for good radio, I understand. But I'm going to try to be entertaining at the same time. What's going on, everyone? How the duty? You guys watch Borat? Let's start off with Borat. I'm making my strawberry and cream Aldi vape. If you guys remember, I was stuck on my um, my obsidian uh, gold label. I still am. I mean, I still I, it's still an Aldi vape, but... After making the strawberry Neapolitan um, last week on live mixing, I figured that we just uh, keep it moving. It was good. It's nice having both. Having both is nice. And that's something you can do in DIY. You can have anything you want. The sky's the limit, you know? The sky is the limit. Three grams of Capella Sweet Strawberry. That's right, that's a lot. I go through tons of this shit with this all day vape. Uh, I don't even have enough. Let's see if I have any more Capella Sweet Strawberry. Give me a second here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Nope. Oh no, we have a leak. <laughs> oh no, we have a leak. We have a fucking vanilla custard sugar cookie leak, which is, you know, not not the worst type of leak. It's not the worst type of leak you can have. Okay, so I don't have I don't have enough. I've run out of Capella Sweet Strawberry. We're going to have to order some. Um, fuck, that sucks. What I can replace it with, I guess, TFA sweet strawberry? If you remember, TFA has their own sweet strawberry these days. I need to put 0 0.6 in. We'll just do 0 0.5. Oh my god, these new Bull CD bottles are like... There we go, that should be good enough. They're not they're they're not interchangeable. Don't think that TFA sweet strawberry is interchangeable with Capella sweet strawberry. They're really not. But for this recipe, whatever, it doesn't really matter. This is just for me. It's just for me. Of course, the yogurt and our sweetener. Ooh, it's got like a nice green hue to it. It's got a nice green hue. I haven't even looked at the chat yet, guys. Give me a second. Let me finish this up. And then I'll get right over to you. I can't start the show without my vape. You know that. What am I going to do? 
What, do you wake up in the morning without vapes? No, I didn't think so. 16. I can't believe I'm out of Capella's Sweet Strawberry. I can't believe that that's a thing. All right, we're almost there. We're almost there. Yeah, so Borat, I watched uh, Borat over the weekend. Borat 2, subsequent movie film. I was a huge Borat 1. I like those type of movies where it's like pranks and they, they fuck with people and it's a, it's a good old time. Borat 1, I think, was a masterpiece. Borat 2, I think, was pretty fucking good. I don't think it was as good as Borat 1, mainly because Borat 1 was new. Like, it was new. It was a new concept. It wasn't a new concept, but it was uh, it was fresh. Like, we haven't seen anything like that before. And Borat 2 didn't really push the envelope like how, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Bruno. So it was like Borat 1 and then Bruno came out and Bruno really pushed things to the extreme. Um, And I was expecting Borat 2 to be even more over the top, but it really wasn't. It was still funny and it was still uh, had a lot of great social commentary on it. Uh, The girl, the the girl who plays his uh, daughter was excellent. She was probably the star of the show. Unfortunately, it just wasn't as uh, impactful, I don't think, as the first one. But I still recommend you check it out. If you have Amazon Prime, you can go watch it. It's really fucking funny. The whole idea is that Kazakhstan has been disgraced. So the government of Kazakhstan, uh, the government of Kazakhstan uses him to go give a gift to Mike Pence. And then things happen and then, you know, things turn out crazy. And then at the end, there's a huge twist. It's pretty funny. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's good stuff. All right, we got our juice mixed up. Let's give it a good old shake and let's start the goddamn show. Trying the developed apple butter but can't get country apple in the UK. Is there any replacement? Mm, I don't know, man. I don't think so. I don't think so. Why can't you get it in the UK? Does Nick River not ship to the UK? I honestly don't know. I mean, if you can find a yellow apple flavor... Off the top of my head, nothing comes to mind. You might want to try... No. Because they're all usually either red apple or green apple. There's no... No one really does a good yellow apple. Except Perillum. So unfortunately, you might be fucked. You might be, as they say, scuffed on Twitch. A lot of kids say this word now. Scuffed. It's scuffed, dude. Use a combo of Wonder Flavor Strawberry Cheesecake and Strawberry Gummy Candy. Makes amazing strawberry. Oh, man. I wish I would have seen that before. I'll try that next time. I'm an old school strawberry guy. Sweet strawberries. TFA strawberries. Who says scuff? You probably say it, nerd. Have you ever made a cucumber mix? I tried an evil vipe pod with cucumber flavor and it was fantastic. Kind of fruity. Yeah, I I have a cucumber recipe somewhere. Cucumbers are pretty good. It's more the import cost. I can get everything but the country apple in the UK. It might be, honestly, it might be worth it to just import it. Nom Noms has country apple in the UK. There you go. Thank you to Two Prod. Two Prod just saved you. Saved you a bunch of money. Now I want you to give Two Prod a kiss on the lips. Give him a kiss on the lips. Say thank you, Two Prod. All right. Ooh, did you see that? There was an ollie with my office chair. Just did an ollie on it. All right, guys, let's go. I go, let's go, let's go. Is it on ELR, ATF? I I don't even know what it is. <laughs> if you can actually send me the link to what it is. I know I've done one before, but if you can send me the link, I'll take a look at it. Let you know if it's worth it or not. Um... All right, let's get the fucking show started. Welcome to Wake Up With Wayne. Every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern, we come at you live on YouTube and Twitch, of course, and we bring you the latest in everything. What's going on in the world? What's going on in vaping? What's going on in my head? Uh, Real quick, make sure you head over to 
DIY or DiveVaping.com and check out my website. Yes, everything that we do goes up here. Remember, there's a new cloning series that's been out. Every Thursday, you get a new cloning episode. Um, all of the episodes, all of the recipes, all of the notes, all of the articles, all of the research, all of the flavor notes, all of the reviews, all of everything gets put up on the website. So make sure you're heading over there every day, checking, staying updated with it. And um, that's pretty much it. Oh, no, that's not it. And I also want you to head over to my Instagram, which is Instagram.com slash DIY or die and give me a follow on Instagram. We're slowly creeping up there, baby. We're past 8000. If you remember, we were a little under a uh, little under 8000 last time. Uh, I'm trying to get up to 10,000. We can get up to 10,000 followers. I get a special link service on my <laughs> Instagram that only 10,000 followers and plus get. Uh, and with that, I will do amazing things with it. So I need you guys to help me. If you want, you can create bot accounts and follow my account for uh, to, to fluff the numbers a bit. I don't care. I, it's not about all that. I just need that link service, okay? So feel free to bot me. Feel free to fluff my numbers. Feel free to hack me. It's okay. And then other than that, other than that, that's pretty much it. What's up with the protests in your city? I don't really know. Um, well, I do know, actually. So there was a shooting, uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, but there was a, um, what? It was yesterday afternoon, there was a shooting, there was like some mentally ill man um, with a knife in his hand, and he, there was police, I mean, this is what the video shows, we don't know the context of what happened, we don't know really too much, but we know that the man was armed with a knife and he was running around like menacingly. Not posing too much of a risk, but he was ill in the head and he had a knife in his hand. Uh, and the entire video, which probably goes on for like 10, 15 minutes, you know, the police with their dr uh, with their guns drawn at him, telling him to, hey, put the knife down, put the knife down, put the knife down, screaming at him, put the knife down, put the knife down, put the knife down. And he's not listening. What makes it worse is that his mother is there, like screaming at him as well, like trying to calm down, trying to stop him from circling and, and walking towards the police. Uh, and, and as you can imagine, um, he ended up walking, looks, it looks like he's charging them in a sort of way, but he's not, I don't know. It looks like he charges them with the knife in his hand. And then they put like 10 bullets in the guy right in front of his mom, right in front of the community who's all filming there. And then as you can imagine, protests erupt and everyone goes crazy. And then I think 30 police got injured last night. Um, now I am actually pretty, um, liberal when it comes to social justice like this. Um, but in this specific case, it's hard to put blame on the police in this case. I understand that everyone was just like, why didn't they use tasers? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do, why didn't they do that? We don't really know what the context was. Maybe they tried some other, what? No. Shut up. I'm talking. Um I it's for me it's from the video it's kind of hard to blame the police because when I feel like when your gun when a police's gun is drawn and that's the end game like that's the last step, right? When the gun is drawn and they're telling you to put down the weapon, you have one step next and then it's they're going to use the weapon. There's really no in between there. I understand the guy was mentally ill. There is talks about tasers and why didn't they use tasers? Why didn't they try to apprehend him in some other way? I get that argument as well. I just find that this is not a very good example of injustice. This was just a really fucked situation. And this kind of stuff happens, especially when you have someone who's mentally ill with a weapon in their hand. It unfortunately usually goes down like this. Maybe there needs to be more uh, accountability for how to handle these situations. But it was clear, like, at least from what from from what I was watching it, it, it was like the last step. Now there was a there there's a bunch of arguments in there, right? Why didn't they use the tasers? Why didn't they use um some sort of like other measures to try to apprehend the guy? And then why did they put 10 bullets in him? You know, maybe they could have only put one bullet in him. I don't know. It I feel like that's such a it's a tricky argument. When you have something like this happening. You can't second guess it, right? You can't 
you can't second guess that situation, especially as a police, because you need to make it known that, look, if you are a criminal or if you are a danger, if you're a threat and we're at the last step, we're at me pointing a gun at you. We're at the last step of this maneuver. If what we say doesn't matter to you, if what we say, say we say we're going to put you down, we're going to take you down, we're going to shoot you, we're going to use our weapons and we don't. What does that say to other people that may be in that same situation? Maybe they're not going to take those threats seriously. And then I, I I cannot understand both arguments there. And like I said, I'm pretty liberal when it comes to this stuff. I, I just don't see... It's just kind of tricky. The problem is, is that it does look... Like, optically, it does look bad. And the police probably... I don't know. Maybe they should have called in more backup. Maybe a bunch of other things should have happened. So it didn't optically look bad, especially in today's political climate. Um... But nonetheless, the, the situation did happen. The man unfortunately lost his life in front of his in front of his mother, which it, it just looks so bad. And of course, there's going to be protests after that. You know what I mean? Like, that's something that these officers now have to think about. It's never going to be the same again. Like, they really need to be careful with how they're using force, which is good. Like, we want that. Um, and we're going to see, like, once more evidence comes out and once the body cam footage comes out, we're going to see kind of how things led up to this. But at least right now from what i've seen from the video to me it's it's uh, to me it's a trickier situation than like what with george floyd or some other situations like brianna taylor um this is a little bit trickier this is a uh, this this is a little trickier of a situation but let me know what you guys think i mean have you guys seen the video at all have you guys seen the video at all i don't want to play cuz it's pretty graphic uh Thoughts on the Inican getting a sponsorship deal with the English Football Association? Are you joking? I didn't know this. Wait a second. What? Inican has a sponsorship deal with who? Like, what's the team? Wait, what the fuck? What's the team on that? What is the team? They should have tased. They should have. They should have uh, tranked them. Bullets are expensive. Yeah, 10 bullets. Yep, 10 bullets. They unloaded 10 bullets in them. At a distance where the officers were at, a man with a knife can close in faster than most people understand. Yeah. Well, it's not... To me, it's not even that. Like, I... I don't even think that that's much of the issue. Like, I don't even think that that's much of the issue. The issue is that when they were at the last step, like guns drawn multiple times, put down the weapon, put down the weapon, put down the weapon. That's, you can't fuck with that. Like no one, black or white, you know, uh, man or woman. When you're at that step, that's the last possible step you could be at. The next step after that is bullets being entered into your body. There's no, have you ever seen a case where that wasn't, that where that didn't happen? You know what I mean? Where they were, put down the weapon, put down the weapon, put down the weapon. The, the the person did not put down the weapon and it ended in a very safe manner. Maybe there's a few cases like that, but that's the last step, right? That's the last step. Otherwise, things are going to go wrong. You know, things are going to go wrong. I just, I, I don't know. I, I find that that's, I, I want to see more about what happened, what led up to that. What was actually the situation? There was like a lot of people in the area. There was a lot of commotion. Maybe there were things that kind of got taken out of hand. Maybe the police didn't need to be there. Maybe it's just something that could have been handled by the community because some of the community members were saying like, these cops aren't even from this area. They don't even know what's going on here. Then they come over here and they shoot this guy. I don't agree with that either. Like, I think police should be uh, darn uh, at least of the district. You know what I mean? Like community policing is very important, I think, and uh, effective policing. So when you have people that come out of town and they just they're just there to enforce the law, it, things get a little trickier. There's no accountability at all. Some accountability needs to be with the people, not just the cops. I agree. I agree. I agree. Could they have given him a little bit more time? Could they have given him a little bit more space? Was he a threat to anyone else in that situation? I don't know. Like, if he was a threat to everyone there, then I can see things being a little bit more on the police side. If he was just a threat to the police, it to me, it makes it a little bit tougher of, a, of, of an argument to, of using 10 bullets and not any other sort of, like, apprehension methods. The whole, wait, the whole association, wait a second, English football, 
Inakin. I can you send me a link or something? I I've not I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. Inakin is advertising in this Premier League? No way. That's awesome. I mean, I think that's great if that's true. I, I need to see some evidence of this. Uh. Except maybe mentally ill. I don't know. That's where the controversy is, right? Scared mentally ill people getting hurt. Perhaps the cops have no choice. Yeah, yeah, mentally ill. I mean, they say he's mentally ill. I don't know how much of that is true. Like, guys, don't believe any of this. Don't believe any information that comes out just after and before something like this happens. You got to wait a little bit before the, the real info comes out. But that's what they were saying was he was mentally ill. <clears throat> he had seven children. Oh, man, that's sad. You back off too much and then an honest citizen gets stabbed and you still get protests, including me. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, it, it's a tough situation. It's a tough situation. And also, I would doubt that there were to be protests if someone, if uh, honestly, if a citizen was stabbed in that situation, I don't think there'd be protests. <clears throat> the the only real to me the only real argument is why wasn't some sort of taser or some sort of any anything else used some sort of like i don't know gas or some sort of mace something like that uh my only thing is like they were at the last step so it's for me it's hard it's a different situation it, it's a tougher it's a tougher argument to make than a lot of the other cases because a lot of those other cases i mean i'm 100 100 on board with them the police acted in a crazy manner. There's no accountability with a lot of police. They get away with anything they want. You know, it, you know, like you guys know, I'm already like a super pro 2A, um, 2A supporter. It's, it's, when we're talking about like people taking away your guns, who do you think is going to take away your guns? When they come for your guns, who do you think is coming to your door to take away your guns? It's going to be the police. So you want to make sure that the police act in a, an accountable way. Otherwise, they're just going to do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, but in this situation, I don't know. It's a little bit trickier. You you get a little bit. I I, I get a little bit less. Um, I get a little bit more analytical of the situation in this particular case when I saw the video. It wasn't a. It wasn't clear cut. Your opinion on this one? Blank lives matter. If you put a color in front of it, you're racist. Well, I think a lot of that has been co-opted by, um, a lot of it's been co-opted. A lot of it's been, the discussion be behind a, a lot of this, these civil movements have been um, warped. I'll just put it that way. I can't stand police. Oh, here we go. We got the, we got an Inikin link. Kick the habit. Wow. Look at this. I wish this thing would stay up. Inigan teams up with EFL to advocate smoking alternatives. Today, Inigan, when was this? 22nd. Today, Inigan announced that we are glad to reach thousands of people by spreading our message at the EFL championship matches this year. We hope this campaign brings attention to the alternatives to smoking. The health risks of smoking are known by everyone, but that doesn't mean quitting is easy, especially without the help. And we'd like you to, to we would like to support you in your journey to finally being smoke free. Wow, look at that. Whoa, that's pretty dope, man. Wow, they must got some cash, huh? You know, I saw a report the other day. I sometimes get reports for um, uh, sales, sit like uh, sales projections and sales numbers of the industry. And in vaping, disposable vaping products uh, and like closed system vaping products are on the rise again. They are starting to trend back upwards. So they're kind of getting out of, um, they're starting to get out of that little dip that we were in uh indican plays a big role in that sort of area they're not i don't know how many disposables or or, or pot systems they have but they do they do kind of reside in that sort of like mouth to lung area so I'd, I'd imagine they'd be getting a little uptick in sales as well that's pretty cool that's pretty fucking cool i don't really watch too much soccer unfortunately i don't watch a lot of premier league i wish i did I'm not well versed in soccer. 
I watch it sometimes, but I'm not I'm not the biggest hooligan. I'm not the biggest hooligan. They will go all full body armor to your house for a fifty dollar warrant. Yeah, I mean I yeah, I agree with that. That's crazy. Uh after you've experienced a true uh, threat to your life, a firearm, a knife in the hands of a perp, you will then become enlightened. There is no reason for a co government to disarm its constituents. We have a constitution that protects these rights. We will still have to vote on constitutional amendments, right? I mean, I think that's idealistic of you to think that. Do you think the Constitution is just like this ho holy uh, document that is going to protect us from all corruption and all evil of our uh, of our government? No, 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 no. You will have to fight to keep it free. You will have to fight to keep it free. Okay, let's get into some other news. Um, Michigan is trying to ban again flavor vapes without lawmaker approval. According to a public notice from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, the administration intends to issue a new executive rulemaking based on the proposed measure to ban flavor vaping products statewide that received much backlash when presented light last year. Last year, I wrote a series of columns about the Michigan flavor ban and its impact on the vape shops and consumers of such products. Michigan was the first state in the U.S. to issue a ban on flavored nicotine vaping products by the avenue of executive orders. A judge for the Court of Claims, however, issued an injunction against Whitmer's administration to halt the order after a vape shop owner successfully argued that the governor overstepped her authority by imposing a blanket ban on vaping products without lawmaker approval, and then the Court of Appeals agreed. The Supreme Court denied the state's petition to reconsider the lower court's ruling. This time around, though, the flavor ban is being considered in a similar format. Michigan HHS announced a public hearing on October 20th this past Tuesday. At my time of the reporting, the result of the hearing and the request for rulemaking is still pending. The details as of right now, quote, these rules will prohibit the selling. Okay, we know what it's going to prohibit. The rules will also prohibit possessing these products with the intent to sell. Sell. The department notes that the rules will limit access to products that are more appealing to youth through specific advertisement restrictions on vapor products, and that the department anticipates acting on these rules to restrict the sale and advertisement of other nicotine products. Um, it's practically the same proposal that was made in October of 2019. The policy intends to restrict all sales and most forms of possession. The policy also intends to strictly regulate the transit of such products. In a policy framework, the proposed plan also extends from the sentiments that came about amid an un- about in about amid an unre an unre unrelated non communicable outbreak of severe lung injury that was tainted by toxic preservatives used in marijuana vaping products. So they're going after it again. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how far they expect to go. It was already shut down. It was already. I mean, they're trying to go with the 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 actual route of banning it. They're trying to get the the, the law to actually state. This is it. The route that got the route that got them rejected previously was because it was an executive order. Whitmer went on her soapbox and she said, I'm going to ban these products no matter what you guys tell me, no matter any vote or rule of law. I don't give a fuck. I'm a tyrant. I'm going to do what I want. Uh, and then the judges were like, no, 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 you can't do that. You have to go through the rulemaking process. And it seems like they're going through that process right now. And they're going to actually try to ban it. And they will probably have bipartisan bipartisan support in doing so and michigan will be vape free that's what i'm assuming that i'm assuming the worst for michigan i'm not assuming good things it seems as if i don't know what's going on over there it's craziness um No one said all lives don't all other lives don't matter, but putting up signs like all lives matter is a protest against a movement for black community equality. That's why I don't like it. I would agree. I think it's just an anti it's an anti it's it's just anti. You know what I mean? It's just anti black lives matter. It's not for all lives matter. <clears throat> um so do you guys think that do you guys think that they're only going to stop at vapor products? No, my friends. They're coming after marijuana already. Fruity pot gummies risk repeating e sick mistake. Cannabis Weekly. So what? October 25th, 2020. Cannabis treats are leaning into fall and hard. Cannabis treats are leaning into fall and hard. One Edibles maker is promoting fruit flavored THC pearls with the hashtag high for Halloween. 
while another has a scary savings promotion on its CBD chocolates. But as a growing industry starts offering seasonal promotions just like other consumer product companies, it may want to take a heed of cautionary tale from the vaping industry. Flavors, when too successful, can addict a younger generation. As the industry matures beyond raw flour into a wider variety of products, can- cannabis edibles are growing fast. Headset, which tracks industry data, estimates that U.S. edibles sales rose 80% over the past two years. Gummies, which are available in bear shapes, rainbow colors, and flavors from raspberry lemonade to exotic wine fruits, are doing particularly well, according to BDSA, a cannabis research firm. They are geared toward consumers 21 and over, but the explosion of offerings mirrors what happened to the vaping industry, which later had fruity flavors banned after they were linked to risking underage use. Look at that. Wow. Chewable candy is a top-selling form of THC and CBD edibles in the United States. Yeah, of course. Of course. Oh no, I'm frozen here. Well, what happened there? I was a little I was a little bit frozen there. That was weird. It's all happening in a bit of regulatory void. The FDA meeting on CBD slated for ne- no, the F an a FDA meeting on CBD slated for November 19th. I didn't know that this was some happening. Is expected to offer hints on whether the agency will view cannabis more as a food or dietary supplement. But specifics remain up in the air. For now, companies talk about how it's hard. What is going on here? Um, I keep freezing. That's not frozen. Oh, why does it freeze when I put this on? Good Lord. <clears throat> Where are we? Anyways, let's just move on. Um, uh, for now, companies talk about how it's hard to get dosing right with their cannibal with their cannabis edibles, but they rarely mention youth use or overdoses. According to Susan Weiss, the director of research at the NIDA. Accidental cannabis overdoses are up, particularly among children, and the heaviest users are 18 to 25, a critical age for neural development that cannabis use may affect. Does it matter? Does it matter? These are adults. These are adults. They can they can critically neural development their brains as much as they want. That's an adult age. It's an adult age. So you can't regulate it. As you can't say those are children. White said in a phone interview that it isn't clear whether sweets or gummies alter the addictive potential of cannabis. Why not when it does it for vapes? When you say it does it for vapes, why does that not work in cannabis? But if it gets people using products at a younger age, that creates a situation where of greater risk of addiction. Around 9% of people who use marijuana will become dependent on it, rising to 17% in those who start using in their teens. Even when it becomes non-psychoactive CBD, which hasn't been shown to have addictive qualities, companies should err on the side of caution, said Daniel Fabricant, CEO of the NPA and the former director of the dietary supplements of the FDA. Fabricant said on a conference call last week that while there's no definitive data yet on how CBD affects hormones on the liver, two main concerns, companies should consider dosage limits or warnings against use by pregnant women. So here we are again. We know how this happened. We know where this goes. We know that this happens. We know what's next. They're going after flavors in marijuana. This is nothing new. And just look, you know what I mean? Like they come in all shapes. They come in lollipops. They come in gummy bears. They come in rainbow drops. They come in fruity roll-ups. We always wondered, you know, why the marijuana industry from, from the Democrats, right? The Democrats are usually the party that's trying to push forth legalization of these products. So why ignore why ignore this? Why ignore this argument when your argument for legalizing marijuana is harm reduction? Legalizing marijuana for harm reduction. Harm reduction in terms of the local, so you're getting the drugs out of the drug dealer hands, you're getting it away from the black market, the crime market. Harm reduction in terms of pharmaceuticals so people who might be using painkillers or using xanax and stuff like that they can now use a safer alternative which is marijuana all arguments i agree with but why is it when we bring the argument of of uh, nicotine into the situation in terms of flavors right when we talk about nicotine we talk about flavors in vapor products why all of a sudden it's a big problem and it's a gateway and it's going to be risking the youth to blah 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 and blah 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 
but marijuana gets a free pass. Now, I'm not saying that government should be regulating marijuana in any way. Uh, That's not what I'm saying. But it just goes to show you that the marijuana industry was very naive in thinking this would only happen to vaping. They should have been very adamant and behind vaping's advocacy against this type of regulation. They should have taken their huge winnings, right? They Look made a lot the of money I'm in doing. these IPOs. I'm not creating any black That's markets. Right. What? That's right. They made these big, big winnings with their IPOs, taking some of that money and advocating the vapor industry, which is a subsequent industry. It's a it's a lateral movement of the industry. Why not come help us with the fight? Because now that we're getting attacked for it, those same arguments are going to be used against you. Those same arguments are going to be used against your products, your best-selling products. And what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to be able to effectively fight it off? You don't even have, you're not even legal in most states. At least nicotine is legal. What are you going to do when you're not even legal in most states? These people are out of their mind. Out of their mind. You know, <clears throat> part of it is on the vaping industry, of course. A lot of the vaping industry didn't want anything. I don't want nothing to do with marijuana. We don't want to be in this fight. We don't want their help. We don't want to take on their troubles. I get it. But they also have way more money. They also ha- are much more successful at advocacy than vaping ever was. Um, so it would have been nice to have some sort of team up here. If we would have two large industry, budding industries, billion dollar industries, the marijuana industry, the vapor industry, they're growing, they're billion dollar industries, they're powerhouses. There's a lot of eyes on them. There's a lot of good that can be done of it. Teaming up to fight against the evil FDA and the evil local legislative groups. But instead they didn't want nothing to do with each other. Hey, what happens to you? May not, I, I don't want nothing to do it. I don't want to take on your problems, blah, blah, blah. And now they're going to effectively try to regulate your uh, existence out. They're going to try to take away your flavors. They're going to try to put put you. It's just a sad situation, really. It's a sad situation because like my wife doesn't smoke marijuana. She eats the gummies or she used to, but she would eat the little uh, candy gummies. And that's how she would take her marijuana. And it was nice. It was it's a very small dosage. It's nice and tasty. It goes down easy. It's a slow rise. It's a great way to get your dosage in there. Uh, that's not, doesn't hit you like a, like a freight train. You know what I mean? It's just a slow bubble up and that's how a lot of people like it. And they can control their dosage a lot better when you can cut little pieces of your edibles down rather than trying to regulate through smoking it or vaping it. Um, for some, it's just easier to just kind of eat it. But, uh, who knows that, that, that route may be in jeopardy. It may be in jeopardy. Um, but we'll see because the marijuana industry is really good at advocacy. So we'll see if they're able to ward that off. I don't think so. I think they will start regulating flavors on marijuana products. I think you're naive to think otherwise. We're just going to have to wait and see on how exactly they do so. Do they only limit it to dispensaries? Do they only limit to certain things? Do they only limit certain flavors? You can't limit certain flavors because that's just foolish. It's bad policy. There's no. It's impossible. It's like trying to limit certain colors, trying to limit certain smells, trying to limit certain sounds. It's literally impossible to do so. But let's not speak about flavored booze. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing too. See, the problem with alcohol is that the alcohol is... Alcohol's already went through this fight with prohibition before. It's already won. It's already had its battle. So it's not, it doesn't need to go through it again. I understand the argument that like, look, you have flavored alcohol. Why would, what's the difference between that and other flavored products? The problem is, is that they're not talking about alcohol. You know what I mean? Like they're just not, it's not even in their discussion. It's not even up for debate. No one is arguing. You know what I mean? Like it's just, you, you can't really use that argument when you're discussing advocacy with marijuana and vapor product. It just doesn't work because then they just go, well, alcohol is alcohol. You know, we're not going to get rid of alcohol. No matter how hard you try, we're not going to regulate any industry the same way we regulate alcohol. Plus, there's a whole fucking racket around it, you know, with liquor licenses and it's a, it's a, it's, it's all corruption. It's all corrupt. It's all bullshit. It's all done. <clears throat> here in southwest michigan we were very known for our grapes and wine 
A lot of the grape vineyards have pulled out the grape bushes and planted hops instead. Now we're a huge craft brewing market. Ooh, interesting. Tobacco farmers should do the same thing with their fields and plant pot instead. Push through federally legalized pot. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. It's a much more, I would say, profitable crop, right? Ooh, man. I miss vaping strawberries and creams. I forgot how good my all-day vape is. The best marijuana flavor is marijuana flavor. It doesn't need other flavors. I get it. When it's eaten or vaped, it's different. Use dry herb vaporizer. Yeah, gummies always taste good. Um, I mean, some people. taste is subjective. Taste is subjective. Some people can't stand the skunkiness of it. You know, some people don't like beer, but they like cocktails, you know. 20, 18 to 24 year old brain development can be effective when they're eligible to join the army and get sent out to war. ET, yeah, yeah, very, very true. Very true. And that's not even, it's not even true. It doesn't affect your neural capacity in any way. It doesn't affect the developing brain. That's, it's a false pretense. They want you defending false pretenses. Don't even engage with those type of discussions. Just be like, no, it's not true. So bring it. Is that all you got? Is it an untrue statement? Put the link where you sign up for membership into chat. You um for the DIY or die membership. Okay. DIYordivaping.com slash shop. That's pretty. Just go to DIYordivaping.com slash shop. There you go. You'll see it there. All right, what else do we have on the docket here? DMT vaping. People are vaping DMT now. Look at this. I sell DMT vape pens so people can break through at their own speed. Sandy is a chemist who makes and sells DMT vape pens, an increasingly popular way to consume this potent psychedelic in a secret lab outside London. Uh, selling DMT for eight years. Made my first DMT vape four years ago. What are people actually buying? They're buying uh, 30 to 50 trips off one little DMT vape device. Isn't that crazy? I just wanted to show you that. I didn't know that you can consume DMT like this, which is pretty weird. Pretty insane. Have any of you guys tried DMT? Legal loophole allows children to get free samples. UK health experts fear sharp rise in popularity of e-cigarettes among teenagers as seen in the US. Health campaigners have expressed an alarm. How do I close this? Have expressed alarm after it emerged that a loophole in the law means it is legal for marketing companies to hand out vapes to children for free. British American Tobacco is investigating after a 17-year-old was offered a free sample of the company's Vipe brand. The miner was not told that the product contained nicotine and was not asked for proof of age. Vape companies regularly distribute free samples to adults using paid third-party promotional companies operating in city centers and at festivals and transport hubs. The promotional teams are young, personable, and sport the livery of the vape brand they represent. Some use additional free offers such as soft drinks to engage with the passerby. Action on smoking and health... Ash said teams working for Vipe had been recently promoting the brand at Brighton, Bristol, and Bath, where a 17-year-old girl working on a market stall was approached and offered a free sample in return for her email address with no attempt to establish her age. The hypocrisy of Bat is staggering, said Debra Arnott, chief executive Ash. The company's website piously states, it's essential that any tobacco or nicotine products are not marketed to youth. Given the nature of our products, we take seriously our commitment to marketing them responsibly only to adults. How can they be doing freebies out? How can they be doing f doling freebies out like sweets to children? How can they say that doling freebies out like sweets to children counts as responsible marketing? When it was alerted to claims that minors were being offered free vapes, Ash approached national training standards of shock to learn that a loophole in the law means it is not illegal to hand out free e-cigarettes to children. This is because e-cigarettes are not covered by the Tobacco Advertising Promotional Act, prohibish, prohibition of free distribution rules, as they are not considered a tobacco product. Yep, but that's a quick way to fuck that up. Pretty insane. So this was a problem that happened in the US as well. If you remember the... The, the huge boom giveaways. Everyone wanted giveaways on YouTube. Everyone was doing giveaways, giveaways, giveaways on Instagram, giveaways on Twitter. I'm giving away this tank. I'm giving away this juice. I'm giving away this juice. Hey, this company sent me over two cases of their juice. So I'm going to give it away. You subscribe to me. 
Use code uh, uh, DOD and you're going to get a nice old enter into my giveaway. Um, and unfortunately, what happened is a lot of underage, I wouldn't say a lot, but underage, uh, there was no attempt at finding, um, uh, at, at proving uh, your age, really, right? No real attempt, at least. Uh, but that went by the wayside here. I mean, we don't, I, have you guys seen any vape giveaways recently? Uh, where they're giving away like nicotine e-liquid have you guys have seen that or disposables at all i i haven't really seen much of that at least on the internet at least on like instagram and twitter and youtube i don't see that anymore it used to dominate i mean it's all i would see i would get tagged in it all the time people would just tag me saying oh tag four people to win this fucking juice and win a whole batch of juice uh but i don't really see that at, that much anymore Check out the Ali G show. Yeah, Ali G is amazing. I've tried DMV. <laughs> yeah, I've never tried DMT. It's one thing I've never tried. I've never tried DMT. DMT was after my was a, was a bit after my uh, drug phase. DMT became popular. I've never tried it. I had a friend who did DMT in the in the Grand Canyon. He said it was amazing. The UK is interesting. Pro vaping, but anti cannabis. Always talking about how cannabis can make you schizo. Really? Yeah, um, yeah, I never got into DMT. Facebook is still full of giveaways. Just saw it on Facebook. Oh, no. Tell them to stop. They're going to fuck it up. Were you an addict or just a recreational user? Are you talking to me? Are you talking about me? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was an addict, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. I was both an addict and a, re and a recreational user. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been... Uh, it's something I've been very open about here. That's why I think drug policy needs to change, man. Drug policy needs to change. We need to get it out of the black market. We need to regulate it. Lost a lot of people in that war. Did you get clean on your own? No, I went to a rehab. I went to rehab at 21. Um... And that was it. I went to rehab at 21. Yep. Right after my 21st birthday, I went to rehab for, for about two years. I went to a detox, then went to a rehab facility, and then went to a halfway house. Did the whole thing, dude. Did the whole thing. There's a lot of people in this in, in this community that has, has a very similar story. Which is what was very fascinating to me when I was doing DIY or Die and talking about my stuff, talking my story, the amount of people with similar stories. You know, it was something I always said is not not every smoker is a drug addict, but every drug addict is a smoker. So it would make sense that they would all transition over. Going into the rooms later on, you start to see more and more people vaping, trying to quit smoking at the same time. Did rehab, did rehab cost you? No idea how it works in America. Not if you have insurance. Not if you have insurance and you go to a, sh you know, kind of a shitty one. <laughs> so what's crazy is like I was talking about Purdue, um, uh, the Sackler family and the Sacklers got away. They got a minimal fine. They're not seeing any jail sentence. These are the people that, that 
created Purdue Pharma, which ended up creating Oxycontin and playing a big role in the opiate epidemic. What was crazy is that they created that and in response, in order for them, in response, they created the rehab market as well. So they created both products. They created the, the, the product that got you into the rehab and they created the facility that got you out of rehab, right? So they created that entire end user system for pain management and just made a fucking killing on it. So there was this whole cottage industry of like rehabs that propped up that, you know, had all sorts of wacky shit going on. Uh, you know, there's like rehabs now that they don't even do step. They don't even do the program. They do some other shit. They do like, it's just crazy. There's so many different rehabs now. Who knows what works, what doesn't work. Um, luckily for me, I was more so recreational drug use wasn't much a use from trauma or a use from um any sort of like uh real any sort of like real deep internal issues it was more of just a uh it just wasn't as serious as that it wasn't as serious as that so it didn't have its claws in me that deeply you know it's still an issue it's still something I, that i have to think about and worry about but you know, how, however many years I'm sober now, or I should say, how many how many years I've been clean off my drug of choice from now, uh, it's not even like a thought. It's like, it doesn't even it doesn't even cross my mind. So I'm I'm one of the lucky use like the the lucky uh, uh, cases of of recovery where I don't know what the number is. Maybe it's like ten percent actually get out. Ten percent actually remain clean after the first two, three years, or something like that. It's like a really high uh, relapse rate with like deep opioid addiction, heroin addiction, oxycontin addiction. You know, Zan. There was a lot of Xanax addiction in the rehab facility that I was in. That I was in at. That was like a big thing as well with Xanax. Lots of addicts in DIY. Yeah, lots of addicts in vaping, period. Have I tried the cherry bomb recipe? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I think it would be covered here if a doc said you should, but not sure. Rehab was 30K a month. My yeah, mine was really expensive. But the the insurance takes care. I mean, that's the problem. Like the rehab facilities realize, like, oh, if we can lobby the governments in getting the insurance to pay for rehab facilities then we can charge these insurance companies whatever the fuck we want. And they would just rack in the money through the insurance companies. And if you didn't have insurance, you were fucked. <laughs> you couldn't go. You couldn't afford it. You know, if you didn't have insurance, you were just fucked. You're not going to rehab. You're not getting clean. You're not going to detox. You're probably going to die. Welcome to America, baby. So what? So basically... The poor uninsured don't have the option to clean up this way. Not only that, they don't, they don't, they can't even get medicine. <laughs> you realize this, right? They, they don't get nothing. The poor in this country get nothing. You get zero. You get a pit, pittance of a welfare check if you're lucky, if you meet the requirements for a welfare check. And they don't even want to give you that. People want to take away that. You get nothing. If you're poor, say goodbye. Bye -bye. You're not getting out of that hole. You're not going to school. You're not getting an education. You're barely going to get a fucking high school. Oh, what's that on my computer screen? You're not going to get an education. You're not getting nothing. You go nowhere. You do nothing. You work in a factory. And you die for our profit. I, like an idiot, said I have insurance and I had to pay co-pays while others in there lied and said they didn't have insurance and the state paid. No, the state was paying for them to go for free? Maybe they have to. Maybe they get a loan or something. That wasn't. That wasn't the case uh, for me. There was. It was sad. Like what would happen was in the detox. What would happen is you would go for like a week or so. So you would get in there, and then you would see people coming in with like real bad problems, and like young kids, like you know, in their twenties. They all had opiate addictions, and they all had Xanax addictions. They were all addicted to something. They would come in and like two days later, they'd be crying because they would have to leave because they, and they weren't ready to leave because their insurance wasn't paying for anything else or they didn't have enough money to pay for the rest of the stay. So they would just say, 
you gotta go. <laughs> you can't stay here. You're not. You're taking up someone else's bed who has insurance who's gonna pay for this type of care. And it happened day in and day out. Someone would have to leave because their insurance would get cut off, or they didn't have insurance or whatever. Who knows what happened to those people? And like one kid was in there for marijuana. He was in there. His parents put him in there for marijuana. And I remember he was there for like, I was there for about, I don't remember how long I was in there for, but um, he was in there before me for like weeks before me and then stayed like weeks after me. And then finally he came, he went to the same facility that I was at. I was like one of the only ones that actually left that detox center and went to a rehab facility. And then once I did that, I actually started seeing the people that were in that detox kind of follow me and go into that rehab. I was like, look, I'll just, if the insurance is going to pay for it, I'll go to Florida. I'll get a nice cozy tan. I'll get all, you know, whatever the insurance wants to pay for, I get all of it. And it was a great experience. It was the best thing I could have done. And then after that, when I was done, because I think my insurance only paid for, I, I think my insurance was just, because my mom had, I was on my parents' health care, thank God. And it was such good insurance that I was able to stay there as long as I want. But at a certain point, I was like, well, why don't I just go to the halfway house and then have it pay for half of that? And then I stayed there for a few months. It was so long ago. I don't remember exactly how that, how the money situation worked out. I briefly got addicted to Coke. And then my cabbie told me he snorted a brick that was gifted to him for saving a guy's life and woke up in a pool of blood. I also noticed my money dwindling and bad behavior, so I just stopped myself. I thought I could, could try drugs without getting addicted when I was young, but Coke proved me wrong. Luckily, I just decided very fast to stop, and that was that. No desire to ever again. Yeah, I never really had... The problem with the problem I found with Coke was that it was just not good enough. Like, it wasn't... I didn't find Coke a very good drug. It was too short acting. Like I would much rather take like Adderall or something or Ritalin. It gave you the same experience and it would last like all day. Where Coco was like, you were spending so much money on it. And it wasn't really even that good. They had a big rehab scam going on for years when they would send girls to Florida only to use them for prostitution. Told my parents I needed help and they didn't take it seriously. My father is at the peak of his alcoholism and she is living in hell. Oh man. Coke did nothing for me at all, 100%. And opiates together. What did they call that when you would take Adderall and Oxycontin at the same time? It's like a speedball, is what it is. All right, this is the main, this is the cover story for today. Vaping and COVID-19, plausibility and causality. So I found this article from Law360 that was posted not too long ago. Listen to this. This is going to scare you a little bit. Anyone that deals with any sort of vaping industry. The first case of COVID-19 in the U.S. was reported January. As of writing this, the U.S. has the world's highest number of COVID-19 cases of any country, with nearly 7.5 million of the more than 35 million cases reported worldwide. Given that COVID-19 is primarily a respiratory disease and that vaping involves the drawing of heated vapor through the mouth and into the lungs, it's perhaps inevitable that some scientific researchers would ask whether vaping increases susceptibility to or severity of COVID-19. It was it was perhaps equally inevitable that even the possibility that such a relationship might exist would lead to liability claims against vaping product manufacturers. However, the very newness of the disease and our accordingly limited understanding of its mechanisms and epidemiology raise the question of whether plaintiffs bringing cases alleging a nexus between vaping and COVID-19 will be able to prove causality as required under tort law principles, or if instead they will be able to only prove what is, in essence, plausibility. In fact, less than three months after... Less than three months elapsed between the first reported COVID-19 case in the U.S. and the first vaping-related COVID-19 liability claim. In April, an allegation that vaping put persons who contracted COVID-19 at greater risk of more serious complications was added to the claims asserted in the federal court multi-district litigation pending in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California against Juul Labs, Inc. and other vape manufacturers and distributors. 
In most exposure-related product liability litigation, there is a substantial body of epidemiological and biological literature regarding the relationship between the exposure and the disease at issue. Think of cigarette smoking and lung cancer, asbestos and mesothelioma, or benzene and acute myeloid leukemia. While the parties to these dispute frequently... While the parties to these disputes frequently disagree about whether the data support a casual relationship between the exposure and outcome at issue, and even more frequently dispute the claim that the exposure caused by the outcome in any individual, they are still working from a well-developed base of scientific and medical data. In the case of vaping and COVID-19, where knowledge of the disease is in its infancy, the science has had not has not had time to catch up to the events. Um the published epidemiological literature contains a very little information regarding a correlation between vaping and the likelihood of developing COVID-19. A single study published in August reported that persons aged 13 to 24 who had used vape products at any time were five times as likely to be diagnosed with COVID-19 than similarly aged persons who had never had used vape or tobacco products. However, the study also reported no significantly significant difference in COVID-19 in in incidents between persons who had vaped in the last 30 days compared to the control group and that both sometime vapors and past 30 day vapors were both more likely to get tested than controls finally the, the study did not adjust for factors other than vaping so there's really a weak case to be made that it actually does sort of that there is any sort of link between vaping and COVID-19 the problem is is not that the discussion rear here is can vaping manufacturers be sued for increasing susceptibility to COVID-19. Can that be something that lawyers fight to? And this makes a very interesting case about that. Well, the last part here, anyone that's too worried, the assertions that the assertions are classic statements of plausibility, not of causation. However, while cases always unfold in real time, in this case, the science is doing so as well, where the courts will allow cases to proceed on the theory that as the case has progressed, the science will as well remains to be seen. So the idea is that you can bring up the idea, you could bring up the case, add it to a liability claim in litigation and through throughout the course of time, throughout the science as it comes in, if they line up, then you can pursue further. Is that even allowed? Is that something that's going to happen? Like you, like we saw, like they were talking about with asbestos and mesothelioma and of course, cancer and tobacco. Uh, is this something that vaping and, and other, I guess, inhaling companies uh, are going to have to worry about? Is the increased susceptibility of COVID-19 or respiratory viruses like this? That is fucking absolutely insane. It's insane. Uh, and there's already a, a case being brought up. Uh, how is this? So how is a court to evaluate a claim like the one Juul MDL? The specific allegation in the master complaint is that Juul users are at greater risk of suffering more complications if they contract coronavirus. But the master complaint does not refer to any scientific studies purporting to describe a causal relationship between vaping and the severity of COVID-19. So if the science does prove otherwise, we can expect a huge influx of these litigation lawsuits coming out. And it's going to be wild, the wild west. It's going to be the wild fucking west. <clears throat> the problem is, is that I don't believe that the science is going to show anything like that. There only needs to be a very sliver of a link between the two. It doesn't need to be that definitive, you know. It's 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 out of control. But this is the kind of stuff that, you know, people don't really think about is the liability lawsuits behind all this stuff. You know how how this all how all this works. I'm not a lawyer. A lot of this is like uh you know, legal mumbo jumbo. It's kind of hard to keep up with a lot of like the legalese, but um, it is an interesting sort of context. It's like, how much can a vaping company be liable for? Because it's such a novel device. It's a, it's a new thing. We haven't really seen much of it. Um, how much are they liable for? Or like how far can that liability go? Who knows? There's a lot of ambulance chasing going around right now with the vaping industry. I can only imagine it's going to pick up and get worse as more and more cases be brought and heard. Pretty insane. But like they say here, a mere showing that a relationship is plausible is legally insufficient. Right. So you need to prove causality. Not just plausibility. And that's what this was about. But I'm going to keep you guys updated on a lot of these like law. As much as we look at like research and, and um, studies, I do want to keep an update on like law and what's going on with uh, 
with the law here and, and how these lawyers are bringing about these cases and where these cases are going and how they're being brought up and how they're being fought and how they're being appealed. This is, I find this just as interesting. You just got your Hadley in the mail? Oh, man, you're going to love it. Use them on right now. My good friend just overdosed because she couldn't get into a rehab facility. Very sad. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Are they like full or was it like an insurance thing? I think they want to keep vaping in a bad place while covering up that some of the vaping deaths were due to COVID-19. What vaping death? Isn't there a study that states nicotine sticks to the cells that COVID apply to somewhere stating that COVID can't bind if nicotine is present? I don't know, but I know like the Farsalino study was, was making the case for nicotine and how nicotine down regulates. It down regulates the same sort of cells that the virus up regulates, meaning because it's a virus, it uses your immune system to attack itself. And then the nicotine down regulates that. So it doesn't allow that cytokine storm to, pro to, to produce and that it could actually be beneficial. And then the, there was that French study that published the same thing and saw the same sort of research, something like that. I, I apologize if I'm, if I'm misinformed there or a little bit off base there, but that's kind of how that, that's kind of how that study went. Which is, I mean, uh, uh, it's a fascinating, uh, it's fascinating to watch how people kind of cover COVID-19, right? It's pretty scary. I just got a Citadel the other day. Absolutely love it. I probably wouldn't have got it if it wasn't for you. Assuming my Entheon is authentic, just need to get to Hadley. Very nice. You'll like it, man. I promise you. Oh, you already love it. Yeah. The French showed that nicotine attaches to the same cell node that COVID-19 does and keeps COVID-19 from attaching and getting it. So is that, is that exactly how that study went? The French stopped people buying nicotine patches? I had a friend who killed himself because of no rehab. We had a way to help these poor. We need a way to help these people out. The study is not peer reviewed, so I would take it with a grain of Nick salt. Yeah, I mean, that's that for sure. For sure. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the rehab, uh, uh, it sucks. That sucks. Yeah, it was an insurance thing. Sucks when people try to get help, but they can't. Yeah, not in this country. Not in this country, unfortunately. Just not how it works. If you don't got the dough, then you got to go. Bye-bye. My boyfriend had COVID for eight weeks. I never got it. I would think that if vaping made you more susceptible, there would have been no way for me to not get it. Wow. Wow. So you were able to not get it? How Do you live with your boyfriend? Or did you not see him for that? Certain, like how, 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 uh, how often were you guys near each other? That's pretty crazy. I would love to know the statistics on how many people who vape have COVID. I would love to see that number. Wow. You live together. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Well, you got, uh, that's pretty good. Maybe you have just a badass immune system. Or again, maybe it's like I was saying about the Farsalinos thing. Like maybe it's down regulating you. Like maybe you do, maybe you did get it, but it didn't affect you. I mean, did you get tested at all? You tested for, wow, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy.
I always thought they said smokers were less susceptible to COVID, but hit harder if they actually got it. I don't know. I thought it was the opposite. I thought they were less, I thought they were more susceptible to getting it because obviously you're putting things in your mouth all the time. You're touching your face all the time. But if you got it, it wasn't that bad for you. All is quiet on the vaping and smoking increases the harm of COVID. The warnings used to dominate the news. Nah, pretty much nothing. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe they learned they could get sued. Colorado PMI corruption. There's a lot of stuff here, guys. Colorado sued for alleged inside deal with Philip Morris. Prop EE, a ballot initiative on this coming November ballot, is a specific anti-competitive and anti-consumer provision that would increase the minimum price of a pack of cigarettes to $7 per pack before the SIG tax, which begins on January 1st, 2021, if the voters adopt the proposition. In total, the proposition proposes a $294 million tax hike. We are deeply concerned that Colorado politicians have agreed to price fixing in what has been reported as a backroom deal with Philip Morris to secure its support for a tax increase said Nicholas Annis Anson, the president and CEO, COO of Liggett Group. Liggett Group is the fourth largest privately held tobacco company in the U.S. The company is headquartered in Durham, North Carolina, has a hefty business within the state limits of Colorado. Vector Group, a subsidiary of Liggett, Liggett was also named in a lawsuit, including Excalibur International. The price-fixing component of Prop EE would not only benefit F F Philip Morris and hurt value-conscious consumers, it was intentionally omitted from the ballot question, leaving Colorado voters in the dark about this unconstitutional proposal. The legal complaint also alleges that Philip Morris and its owner, Altria, are, com are implicated in a scheme to fix cigarette prices for premium products, which eliminates the market for discount cigarettes across the state. The company agreed not to oppose a cigarette excise tax increase of $1.10 per pack for the protection of its current market share. Other calculations include a higher tax rate per pack. Prop EE will double the price of cigarette brands and therefore creates a controversial environment for sales for consumers of discount cigarettes. The state treasury will only see half of the funds generated by the state-imposed price increase. Retailers will, they are, will therefore be able to sell fewer discount cigarettes at higher profit margins, the lawsuit said, via reporting by Denver Post. This comes at the expense of the plaintiffs and other out-of-state cigarette manufacturers who will lose sales, profits, and market share as a result. Discount cigarettes sell in Colorado at about $3.80 to $5.30 per pack, notes the lawsuit. Marlboro sells packs for nearly $7, $6.55. The tax hike will impact discount cigarettes through dramatic price increases. Cigarette taxes would rise by at least $1.94 from $0.84 cents each. Additionally, notes the lawsuit and the post. So if you could see here, just, this, just the price, right? So the tax hike would impact the margins of the discount cigarettes so much more than what Marble already sells their packs at. You see? You see how this works? And that's why they're arguing against it. It does seem like a fucking backroom deal. I'm about ready to blow your fucking mind. It's insane that this was even put forth. I mean, it, it's literally like a gift to PMI. It's a gift to PMI. Because then, look, these would have to be sold at $7, where Marlboro already sells nearly at $7, a mere tiny increase in tax price, where the discount cigarette companies are getting screwed. I mean, if you get a pack for three eighty, dollars and then they're selling it to you for 7 bucks, those are destroying your margins. No one's going to buy it. They're all just going to be like, I'll just get the Marlboro Lights which are better. That's insane. Insanity. And they're hiding it from the ballot initiative. So the voters don't even know that they're voting on it. They're hiding it on the ballot initiative. So they're going through. They're pushing through. Um, they're suing them. They're going to sue and they're going to try to defeat that proposition. Or at least get it off of the bill. How crazy is that, huh? And lastly, in vaping news, <clears throat> Australia. Oh, we have a couple. Of, another Australia thing too. Uh, but last in vaping news, retailers call for a fair go with sale of e-cigarettes. The industry, uh, the Australian Association of Convenience Stores and the National Retailers Association have both recently highlighted 
that the federal government's decision regarding the sale of smoke-free tobacco products will hurt Australian retailers. After the government sent out a backflip on a previous ban of personal imports of e-cigarettes and vape products, NRA chief CEO Dominic Lamb said the policy posi- position was getting weirder by the day. Quote, last month, smoke-free tobacco products were deemed so harmful that the government decided they could only be sold at a chemist by prescription with visits to a doctor every three months. The same government says it will reverse its looming ban on importing vaping products so individuals will be free to buy them from overseas dealers and have them shipped into Australia. The result is that these products are so tightly restricted that they are treated as controlled drug and it's so loosely restricted that anyone can import them. The only people who will be banned from selling smoke-free tobacco products will be the tens of thousands of mom and dad retailers who currently rely on cigarette sales but are desperate to offer their customers a less harmful alternative. This government clearly supports overseas retailers as much as it supports big box corporate pharmacy. It's just a shame that it won't support small local Australian businesses. Wow, what a great little comment there. Uh, so as you can see, the argument here by the convenience store associations is like, look, the way that this regulation is written up is fucked. It leaves out all the small mom and pop local Australian companies from selling these safer alternatives. Why would it, it, it just, this makes no sense. So this is the policy that this is where vaping policy goes, right? It's so bad these people have no idea what they're doing. They end up fucking their own legislation, their own legislators, they, 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 or their own constituents. They end up fucking their own districts, their own provisionaries. It's just, it's so stupid. It's You would think it would be the opposite, right? You can't import anything. We don't want out-of-state sales. If at least you're going to sell it, you have to sell it from within local businesses so that we can get a tax cut from it and that we can allow the economy to grow. No, it's backwards. You can get it imported from any other way or wherever you want, but we don't want any of the Australian businesses seeing any profit from it. So they're going to have to sell these deadly cigarettes to the customers if they want to see any sort of tax revenue. Um, and that's Australia for you. That's Australia for you. Is that going to get reversed? I mean, the convenience store lobbies are pretty good. Remember, that's what really where a lot of the lobby is in the advocacy uh, for vaping. So we're going to see how far that can go, you know. All right, and then lastly, Pippa sent me this last night. This is the documentary Australia Up in Smoke. It's premiering in two days here. You guys want to check it out? Australia Up in Smoke. Going to be exciting. It's ready to go. I know it's great. I know I see you guys in the chat. It's crazy. It's so stupid. All right. And then I have lastly <laughs> discussion here. I want to know what you guys think in the chat. Veggie burgers can be called burgers, says European Parliament. Veggie burgers can be just called burgers, said the European Parliament. The European Parliament came together Friday to vote on a variety of issues, including whether a veggie burger is a burger. Farmer lobbyists argued no. Environmentalists said yes. The parliament said yes too in a decisive vote against a measure that would ban plant-based meat alternatives from being referred to by the names of their meat counterparts. This means terms like steak, sausage, and burger. Reason prevailed and climate sinners lost. Nikolai Vilmusen, a member of the European parliament, tweeted following the vote, it's worth celebrating with a veggie burger. It's common sense, according to Camille Perrin, the food, senior food policy officer at the European Consumer Organization. Consumers are in no way confused by soy steak or chickpea-based sausage, so as long as it's clearly labeled as vegetarian Mom, or vegan. I want a vape. Terms like burger and steak for plant-based foods help consumers understand how to integrate them into their meals. Before the vote, Europe's largest farmer association, Copa Cocoga, argued that against the types of names hurt farmers and promote misleading and unfair marketing. We simply call for the work of millions of European farmers and livestock sector workers to be acknowledged and respected, said Jean-Pierre Fleury, Copa Coca-Cola chairman, said in a statement earlier this month. I'm not afraid to say that this is an obvious case of cultural hijacking. Milk substitutes. While veggie meat alternatives are safe, vegan dairy alternatives like almond milk or tofu butter aren't. European already, Europe already banned labeling plant-based dairy alternatives as milk, with some exceptions. Now the parliament tightly restricts. Now the parliament tightened restrictions and could prohibit descriptors such as yogurt style, butter alternative, or creamy, according to Politico. 
Greenpeace EU Agriculture Policy Director Marco Conterio called the move disgraceful. The votes won't change the fact that more and more people are eating more vegetables and switching to meat and dairy alternatives. Uh, said, and it will continue to call dairy-free products yogurt and cheese anyway. What do you guys think? Do you think that they should accurate? Do you think that if I sell a veggie burger as just a burger, that that is in any way sort of, uh, I don't know, cultural hijacking or wrong? Or I, what do you think? Because this is my argument. What if we get to a place where What if we get to a place where, I don't know, I, I, it's odd. It's like, what if there's no difference between, like the Impossible Burger, right? What if there's no difference between a cow burger and an Impossible Burger? Literally no difference from the taste to uh, how it feels, to how it cooks, to how it smells, to, to how it reacts to the body. Like it reacts to the body in the same exact way. It reacts like meat, reacts like beef. I don't know if we get to that place, but I would have to name it an impossible burger, like non-meat burger or some sort of like other thing. It's I, I wonder if, the, if we ever got to that sort of level, if then that fight would make a lot more sense because then, I don't know, I just, I, I find it interesting. Now, obviously, me being a capitalist, you name whatever the fuck you want, you know, name, name it whatever you want. You want to call it a cheeseburger? Feel free to name it a cheeseburger. I used to eat very, I used to be a vegan way, 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 way back in the day. I was a vegan for an entire year. Vegan, vegan means nothing but plant and sticks. <laughs> I mean, it was hard, dude, but I did it. I, I, I don't know if I told you guys this. I think I did. I've been pretty open about this before, I think, but I had pretty bad acne as a teenager. And the only, and I was taking pills. I was going to the dermatologist every like few months where they would go and they would like scrape my face of like all of like the shit. And I had it all over my back. It was terrible. I went vegan for a year and like half a year, maybe three or four months into being a vegan, it was all gone. My, it was all cleared up and I have the beautiful skin that you see today ever since then. I mean, it's, it's just perfect skin now for being vegan. <clears throat> um, and I will say like, there was a point where I was eating like a ton of veggie burgers and veggie this. And this was like when veganism was like first, like I was one of the first people on veganism when it, uh, no one was doing it. I was, I'm the vegan hipster. You know what I mean? I'm usually on a lot of these trends. I do a lot of these trends before anyone gets onto them and then I'm done with them and then I'm bored with them. But I was a vegan for a while. And I will say the the vegan foods and like the the alternative foods that we have today compared to when I was a vegan, oh my god! I would I probably would still be vegan if I had the food that 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 that's available today. It, they're good, man. They are really good. They're getting really fucking good at this shit. Back then, dude, like Boca Burgers, and uh, you had Boca Burgers, and you had you had Boca Burger. I don't know. You didn't have anything else. Had fucking Boca burgers, That's which were okay. Impressive. I mean, I thought they were okay, probably because I was starving all the time. You know what I mean? Like, if I ate a Boca burger now, I'd probably be disgraced by its flavor. But nowadays, like, at, dude, you can easily live vegan. You could easily live vegan. I get the idea. I don't understand why they're saying it hurts farmers. I don't understand that. I don't. I don't get the idea. If you say this is a vegan burger. So they're arguing you can't even call it a burger. You would have to call it something. You can't call it a burger. A burger would be only meant for beef. Steak is only meant for beef. So calling something a veggie burger would not be okay. I did invent veganism. What are you talking about? I was the first vegan ever. Was Jesus a vegan? You're not the first vegan ever. Yes, I was. I knew no vegans. When I would go to a restaurant, this was how. No, 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 no. When I would go to restaurants, I... get out of here. get out of my house, yeah, go outside somewhere. When I would go to restaurants, I would be like, 
I don't, do you have anything that's not meat? I, I don't eat meat. And they would look at me like I was from another planet. Mom, I want a vape. Jesus said it's not what goes in your mouth that makes you unclean. It's what comes out. That's why Christians eat pork when Jews and Muslims don't. Wait, Jesus says it's not what goes in your mouth that makes you unclean. It's what comes out. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't understand what that means. I don't understand what that means. I've read the Bible. I don't remember that passage. So he doesn't want you pooping? Is that what he means? Ingested plants do not act the same way in their body as meat. Our bodies are designed to receive all our nutrients from meat. You know what's funny is how like, you know, the only, I always, I find it funny that like, uh, veganism and like diet is so political. Like it's so political. It's so funny to me because this was never like it. It was not this way when I was a vegan. When I was a vegan, it was like uh, I was like a uh, an al and like an alien. Like people had no idea what I was doing, why I was doing. It. Like they were, they thought I was insane. But now it's like a political thing. Now it's like you have to eat meat, otherwise you are a lesser being, or the other side, you have to eat plants, otherwise you're a lesser being. It's such an, it got into such an interesting little realm of discussion. People are so passionate about if you should eat meat or not. It's really funny. I would say the only reason that I stopped eating meat, or I, or I started eating meat again, is because I, was, I saw my friend eating a, a chicken he was eating a chicken patty at the beach one day, and I was like, that looks so fucking good. And I, who cares at this point? That looks way too good. So then I just stopped. Like, it was not a moral thing. It was just one day I was like, let me try veganism, see if it helps my acne. It did. I just stuck with it for a year. Uh, maybe it was a little over a year. And then after that, I was like, I'm kind of done with it. It's It was so difficult, and it was so expensive at the time. It was so, so expensive. If you wanted to eat good, it was kind of like how like uh, uh, I would equate it to like the the keto diet. Like the keto diet is just as expensive as like a full vegan diet. Both are very expensive, privileged diets. <laughs> if you're poor, you don't have money. You're not. You can't do keto and you can't do vegan. You're gonna be eating McDonald's and eating whatever the fuck you can. Consuming milk is another controversial topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, consuming milk. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah, people say like humans are not, humans were never supposed to drink milk or something. I, f I forget what the argument was. Like our bodies were not programmed to, to consume dairy after our, uh, our uh, like infancy basically. But beef milk is so yummy. I mean, all beef is yummy. Like beef is yummy, milk is yummy. You can just vape milk nowadays, so it's not really that much of a loss. It's the word you say that made you unclean. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> oh, the way you worded it sounds like he means like it's not what you eat doesn't make you unclean but what you poop out makes you unclean so it's kind of confusing but you mean what comes out of your mouth makes you unclean <laughs> that's so funny that i got that mixed up i was so confused at what you were talking about everything in life has become political it's so ridiculous amen to that everyone wants to be on a side everyone wants to have a team to root for it's so stupid and cringe and corny I hate it. You know what? Let's start our own team. <laughs> Let's start our own DIY or die team. Here we go. This is what we are going to advocate for. Let's bring up a Let's bring up a notepad here. Let's bring up a notepad. This we're going to start ourselves a team here that to that we're going to advocate as, okay? All right, because I know you guys love teams. You're, I'm Republican, I'm liberal, I'm Black Lives Matter, I'm Blue Lives Matter, I'm left, I'm right. Well, today we, today we get rid of all of those notions and we join the same team today. And we join the same team. 
And this team is going to be built on the backs of hatred. Okay. Here we go. This is going to be built on the backs of hatred. That's right. Oh, let me do this. Open as page. Beautiful. All That's right. Pretty this is where, this is this is our uh, oh what did I do? Why did I do? Why does this do this? This is so annoying. This program, bro. This program is so annoying. Give me a second, real quick. All right. All right. What should we uh what should we name ourselves? We're gonna name ourselves. <sighs> you know how Kanye has the birthday party? We need a party. We need some sort of party. We need some sort of parties. The big dick bandit party? No, that's too sexist. That's we need we need to be inclusive. We have women in here who don't have big dicks. I mean, I guess you can have a big dick if you're a woman as well. But uh We're going to be called the partisan party. We're the partisan party, okay? I know you're not supposed to be partisan in these days, but we are the partisan party. This is what we advocate for. Okay? The partisan party, we're advocating for <laughs> the destruction and failure of all parties, birthday included. No parties. We want nothing of the sort. We don't even want the word party in the dictionary. Removal of the word party from Webster's dictionary that's correct we are the partisan party we don't want any of this how come this didn't work like that ooh, ooh. i guess i could do it like this The destruction and failure of all parties, birthdays included, removal of the word party from the Webster's Dictionary. Those who engage in partisan party hackery <laughs> will be called corny and cringe publicly that's just that that so if you and find someone who's engaging in partisan party hackery right meaning they just they drop any critical thinking from their brain to 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 align with a party line right to align with the party line to to to, to tow the party line if you see any of this partisan hackery it doesn't matter for any group veganism beefism Leftism, rightism, blackism, whiteism. <laughs> That's a pretty good uh, thing there. Uh, if you see any of this engagement of partisan hackery, where the facts don't matter, where the logic, where the where logic and data don't matter, you will call them publicly cringe and corny, and you will dismiss them until. They have understood the failure of their ways. <laughs> so just dismiss it because you're corny, you're cringe, and then you dismiss them because their minds are jello. Their mind they they have the minds of a jello person, of a of a child, of a of an infant, and you will just dismiss them and you will ignore them and you will not engage with these people, okay? You will not engage with these people. 
Yes, we were going to definitely ban all bodies of water. We will get there. The anti-party party. The anti-party. The anti-party party. The anti-partos. The anti-partos. And we will be known as the anti-postians. Anti-postians. You're an anti-posto. An anti-postian is also known as an anti-posto, okay? We will be known as the anti-postians. And we will advocate for the destruction and failure of all, parties, of all parties. We will advocate for the inevitable destruction. Because it is inevitable. It's inevitable that these parties will fail. It's just a fact. Um, all right, what else do we advocate for? We advocate for any any um, any members who engage in partisan hackery will be publicly ridiculed as you're being too corny right now, dude. And given a strike. After two corny strikes. They will be demoted to. They will be demoted to. They will be demoted. <laughs> A thousand lashings. Okay, we can, we can lash them. That'd be fun. <laughs> um, what else? JV says Trump for Prez. You get a timeout. Someone call JV corny, please. Call him. Say, hey, you're being too corny right now, dude. Someone say, you're being too corny right now. You're being partisan hackery. You're engaging in partisan hackery. We want none of it. You get timed out. Uh, we, need, we need a mission, right? We need some sort of goal to achieve, right? So we advocate for the destruction. We have our rules. Anyone engaging in partisan hackery will be corny and cringe publicly. We have our internal rules. If anyone is being engaged in partisan hackery within our group, within our party, you just you call them corny and you give them another strike. After two strikes, you get demoted. And I haven't decided what that is yet. Boo this man. <laughs> um, but we need a goal. Like we need some sort of mission. We need a mission statement. What what can our mission statement be? What can our mission statement be? We need uh, some sort of goal. Um, our goal is to our our. Uh, we have our mission statement, but we need like an active like what we part what are pers pursuing. We need something to pursue. We need to pursue some sort of actual thing. Um, I feel like watching Punishment is watching a new Rip Trippers video. The Antipostians are the flying spaghetti monster. Antipostafarians. We are pro-Pastafarian, but we are anti-Pastafarian party. You got to remember, we're, we're against the parties. All right, we can add that to the rule. We are against the parties. And not the partisan. <laughs> mm. 
Mm-hmm. We want the destruction of the party. The destruction of the party. And lastly, I think that's pretty good for a mission statement. I think we have our goal. I think we have our. Uh, I think we have our ideas. Thou shalt not indulge in cornyism. Yeah, we should have a commandment. We should have a ten commandment. Thou shalt not indulge in cornyism. Thou shalt not indulge in partisan hackery. The pursuit of delicious flavor. Yes. Yes. We are in pursuit of perfect flavor forever and always to everyone. This mission cannot succeed with That's just it. We'll just do that like this. We are in pursuit of perfect flavor forever and always to everyone. I think this is pretty good. We are the Antipostians. We, well, you're known as an Antipostian. So sometimes, some, next time someone asks you, hey, what uh, what party do you align with? Say, I am with the Antiparty Party and I am an Antipostian. And uh, if they ask you what that means, just, be, just say, hey, look, I am for the inevitable destruction and failure of all parties. And anyone who engages in partisan hack, partisan party hackery will be publicly ridiculed and called corny and cringe. And that will rid the world of evil. I promise you, once everyone starts to realize, oh, wow, oh, I'm being corny, I'm being cringe. I didn't realize that I'm actually being corny and cringe. They're going to introspectively think about their own partisan hackery ways and they're going to start to they're going to start to align and they're going to go, "You know what? What am I doing with all this party nonsense and all this partisan hackery? I'm going to join the Antipostians and the Anti-Party Party and we're going to go and call others corny and cringe." Cuz that's I mean, it's fun calling people corny and cringe. Like that's that's the hedonism aspect of what we do. And then finally our pursuit is for perfect flavor forever and always for everyone. Uh, we can't get we can't get to perfect flavor forever and always to everyone. If we have partisan hackery, that's just that's just how it is. We are against the party, but not against the partisan. Remember that we're doing this for their own good, for the destruction of their party, not for the destruction of them, for the destruction of their own party. They're not going to be able to see that their party is corny and cringe if they don't realize that they're being corny and cringe by going along with the party. You see what I'm saying? Now, we have our own ways. We can be corny and cringe in in our in it of ourselves. So we must be held accountable by other antipostians. I think we have a good, um, I think we have a good, uh, should I run on this? Should I run for city council on this? I think this is pretty good. I think this is all you need nowadays to run for office. You just need a mission statement, a goal, and you need to have some sort of way that people can recognize you. We need a uh, logo. How about a logo? Oh, you know what? I can find an emoji. We need a logo here. What can an Antipostians be? We can't do the spaghetti because, you, like you said, that's a spaghetti monster thing. Ooh, we can do a food logo. Some sort of food. Well, that's what spaghetti is, I guess. What could a logo be? The Anti-Party Party. Our logo will be... The stop sign. There we go. The anti-party party. This is our logo. Anytime. Anytime. Horny and fringe. Corny and cringe. Horny and fringe. <laughs> so anytime someone's being cringe and corny. Okay. This is what I want your... Uh, and I want you to do this... Um. Outside of this as well. So you, this is what you do. You type it like this, okay? How do I type an emoji? How do I type emojis here? How do I copy an emoji? Can I copy? Well, let me. 
I don't know how to do it. No, I know what that is. All right, this is what you're going to do. You type stop sign. All right? And you say halt. You are being corny and cringe. Please excuse yourself from this convo immediately. Stop sign. This is what I want. This is this is how it should. I mean, this is a guideline. You can, of course, have some creative liberty in between this, in between the lines here. But you have to hit him with the halt. You say halt. You're being corny and cringe. There we go. The anti posty The anti-party party. Wow, what a beautiful... This is the start of something amazing here. This is truly the start of something amazing. The pursuit of perfect flavor forever and always to everyone. Wow. What a beautiful sight. I love it. People will probably support you. In the UK, they have the Monster Raving Looney Party, and it's run by a cat. The Monster Raving Looney Party? Are they anti-party party? Maybe we can have allies. Maybe if our goals align, we can have allies. The official Monster Raving Looney Party is a political party Established in the UK by musician David Such, known as the Screaming Lord Such, Third Earl of Harrow, or simply Lord Such. <laughs> Look at the percentage of votes that they got. <laughs> I want to know what their policies are. What do they, what do they stand for? It seems a little too absurdist. The other suggestions so far unadopted, including minting a 99 pence coin and forbidding Greyhound racing in order to stop the country going to the dogs. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I I will be uh I will be currently I will be the uh I, we don't have a president. We don't have a CEO. We have a, a nor a lord. That's too much. That's too hierarchy. It's too party. It's just too monarchist. Um, I will be. Uh, <laughs> what is Vanguard from? Ne what is the Nexium thing? Vanguard. I will be Vanguard Walker. I'm the Vanguard, like the Nexium sex cult. Um. You can you can you can now uh, address me as Vanguard or just Walker or Wayne, either or, but just know that is my official title, Vanguard Walker. Halt! You're being corny and cringe. Please excuse yourself from this convo immediately. You could say things like Halt! You are being corny and cringe. You you could say Halt! You are engaging in political hackery. You're being corny and cringe. No one likes you. You can say things like that. No one's laughing at your joke. No one thinks you're cool. No one at the party wants you to hear, you know, like you want like high school level because that's at the end of the day, what really gets people upset. It's their high school years. You know, it's their formidable, like pre pre adult years that has formed them into the person they are. That's where their deep seated insecurities lie right? In those years of ridicule, the, the awkward ages, you want to hit at the core of that when you when you speak to these 
people because that's what's really going to get them to snap out of the trance the 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 illusion that they're in some sort of like team you know what i mean like they're on some sort of team you need them to snap out of it and the way you do that is you get at their deep-seated insecurities that are normally i say hey man no one invited you to this party no one likes you here go home to your mama stuff like that um you know these these sort of like real high school level things you know they're not you know one wants you at this lunch table stuff like that you know where did you get that t-shirt walmart stuff like that does your mom buy that at walmart for you little boy um just real sort of like playful but also deeply hurtful level commentary and then of course you're corny and cringe snap out of it halt what you're doing think about your actions and maybe one day you can join the anti-party party and calling this stuff out maybe we can find an example of someone being anti-part or some, someone being in uh engaging in such a thing let's find it let's look at the facebook group here let's look at this facebook group facebook group is pretty good that's the problem. We got a pretty good group in there, so we might not be able to find uh, anything like this. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's someone on Facebook who kicked the habit, Anakin. That's pretty fucking cool, man. Is Dimitri like the CEO of Anakin these days? What's going on there? We might have to go to Twitter. We might have to go to Twitter for this. Did your mom buy you those pants in Ikea? <laughs> Vermin Supreme. All right, guys, it's one o'clock. It is one o'clock. We've covered a lot. We've uncovered a lot. Oh, yeah, this was on the Facebook group. Should we watch this real quick? I'm an honor student. I'm in the band, and I'm captain of the soccer team. Mom, I know you think I'm the perfect kid, that I'm too smart to get into trouble. I don't want to disappoint you, but I have a confession to make. Do you ever wonder why my clothes smell like mango all the time? <laughs> Do you wonder why my clothes smell like mango all the time? For no apparent reason throughout the night, it's because I started vaping this year. More than 3 million high school students use e-cigarettes. Vaping practices among high schoolers have more than doubled since 2017. I wish you would have told me how bad this could be for me. How people can really get hurt. I almost wish you would find my jewel in my drawer and yell at me and make me stop. I don't know what to do, and I don't. What the fuck? Why? Why? Why is she looking at the mirror and then looking at us? In the, this is so weird, dude. This is spooky. How people can really get hurt. I almost wish you would find my jewel in my drawer and yell at me and make me stop. I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to talk to you about it. <laughs> Oh my god. Um This is definitely corny and cringe. I don't like anything about this. This is actually pretty scary. This could be your team. For tips on how to talk to your kids about vaping, download the parent toolkit from parentsagainstvaping.org. Is this pave? Of course, and then it leads us to pave. 
Yep. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Let's see what Pave's Twitter has been up to. Keep yapping, man. There's never been a more critical time to protect to protect Denver's kids from the dangers of flavored e-cigarettes. We join forces with other orgs to help ban the sale of flavored tobacco products in Denver. Wow. Flavors hook Colorado kids. Wow, this is an entire wow, dude. How many of these are vapors? Oh my lord. Wow. These orgs. Uh, uh, I'm sick of these orgs. There's so many of these orgs. You know what they are? They're tax havens. That's what they are. They're tax havens. This is nuts. A big vaping company is running colorful TV commercials with rap music and Instagram ads inviting people to join the party. It is hiring artists to design skins for its vapes. It's not Jewel. Wow. Colors, rap music, skins. These are things I guess adults want nothing to do with. What kind of adult would want something? I... Well, at least we know they're losing. They're in a losing fight. It's good. You can't beat us. You can't. It's impossible. You will never beat us. You'll never win. You can keep trying, though. You can keep trying. Sniffing mangoes in the toilet. It's insane. All right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I think that's it. I don't have anything else. I need to eat lunch. And I have some stuff to put up on the website. You should definitely make a stop your being corny and cringe sound bite. <laughs> Absolutely correct. Wayne Abedes. Thank you, Wayne Abedes. Yeah, we need to uh we need a, we need some sort of like public we need some sort of like public uh in order for this party to be legitimized and for this party to be um seen as a credible source of anti-hackery, we need some sort of public disposition. Something to really show people we mean business. We we're coming after you who are being corny and cringe. We need some sort of like public display. You know what I mean? I need to think of some way to get some public display. What's going on here? Did you send in a, a take a look at my recipe? We're not. We're probably not going to do that today. We'll probably do that tomorrow. Oh, let me see. Oh, you sent in a critique. You said in a critique. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless you'd sent in something else. Check out my recipe. Is that what you sent in? This lemon tart. Did we not look at this before? The drawers are from Ikea. This looks pretty good. You got the yogurt in there? Yeah, this looks pretty good. I, I, I don't... 
It looks pretty good. I don't really have too much else on it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You might not want to do my critique unless you like strong coffee. Send in another one. Send in another one. I'm not going to do a coffee. I don't like strong coffee. You know I don't like strong coffee. Unless it's like actually like a different coffee flavoring that I've never seen before. Which one was yours? I don't see yours. Uh, oh, I see right here. Saul not good, man. Saul good not. Saul good, man. What's the best place to unload unwanted juice? I bought a ton of different flavors and don't like half of them. But I, I mean, you should, might as well just, do you not have room for them? You might as well just hold on to them. I mean, they're water soluble. You can just pour them down the drain. They're not like oils or anything. Hibiscus and coffee? Is that the flavor? Yeah, this is the recipe it just sent in. I see it on there. What squonk would I recommend? I like the Aegis one. I would recommend this. The top side is good too. But I I like this one. Takes a beating. Oh, it's getting hot up here. All right, let's get out of here. What a good show. What a good show. We invented a new anti party. We invented the Antipastians. We learned a lot today. We uncovered a lot of corruption, corruption around uh, Michigan, corruption around uh, marijuana, corruption around COVID and the law, corruption in Colorado, corruption in Australia. I had murder hornets up there. They destroyed the first murder hornet nest in the United States. Murder hornets are now here. Um, but other than that, other than that, I think we've understood a lot today. What a good show. I love you all. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. For midweek critique, don't forget. And remember, no live mixing this Friday. So we have tomorrow, we have Thursday, and that's it. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye.